Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Lord, and the Son of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the age of the Thou art justified by sentence and blameless in thy judgment. Behold, I was brought 
despise not a venerable lady in the prayers of sinners, for he who took upon himself to suffer for our sake is merciful and strong to save. Let thy tender mercies, O Lord, speedily go before us, for we are become exceedingly poor. Help us, O God of our salvation, for the glory of thy name. O Lord, deliver us and purge away our sins for thy name's sake. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. O most holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, cleanse us from our sins. Master, pardon our transgressions. Holy Martin, and then heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil one. For Christ is the kingdom and the power and the glory and the holy and the Son of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Now the flaming sword no longer guards the gates of paradise, but has been mysteriously quenched by the wood of the cross. The sting of death and the victory of hell has been vanquished. For thou, O my Savior, a king, and cry to those in hell, enter again into paradise. Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Thou, by every season and every hour, heaven and under the worship and glorified of Christ our God, who are long suffering, merciful, and compassionate, who loves the just and shows mercy on the sinner, who calls all salvation to the promise of blessing to come. O Lord, in this hour, save our supplications and direct our lives according to thy commandments. Make holy our souls, hallow our bodies, correct our thoughts, cleanse our minds, deliver us from all tribulation, evil, and distress. Compass us about with thy holy angels, that guided and guarded by them, we may attain to the unity of the faith, and to the knowledge of thine unapproachable glory. For thou art blessed unto ages of ages. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. More honorable than a cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than a seraphim. Without defilement, you gave birth to God the Word. Through their tokos, we magnify you. In the name of the Lord, give the blessing, Father. The prayer for only one is the Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save all. Amen. O God, the Lord of hosts, and author of all creation, who in thine ineffable tender mercies has sent thine and the living God the Son. Our Lord Jesus Christ, for the salvation of our kind, and through his holy cross, is poured out the handwritings of our sins, and thereby crowned over the princes and dominions of our kids. Through thou, Master, and God, may God accept these prayers and thanksgiving and supplication, even from us, through the name of the Lord, and every dark and heavy transgression, brought in the Lord, and the visible that means to seek to do us harm. Nail our blood to the name of the Lord, and our hearts incline me to the word of the cross. Go home, and our souls, and thy love, that is the reason of not being guided by thy light, and behold, and thee, the eternal life that no man can approach. We may send up unceasing praises and thanksgiving unto thee, the Father, without beginning, together with thine only begotten Son, and thy most holy, good and life giving Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Blessed is the kingdom.
sacrifices for sins. He can have compassion on those who are ignorant and going astray, since he himself is also beset by weakness. Because of this, he is required, as for the people, so also for himself, to offer for sins. And no man takes this honor unto himself, but he that is called by God, as was Aaron, so also Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee. As he saith also in another place, Thou art a priest forever, 
After the order of Melchizedek. Peace be unto you, my friend. And to thy spirit be hallelujah in the eighth tone. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. which thou hast gotten of old. Also, their earthly struggles. We see the abuses they suffer, the 
persecutions they endured. When I was in college, I read a book on the life of St. Nectarius during one winter semester. And I remember I couldn't put the book down, just amazed at the simple and humble man who was continually envied and slandered and mocked and ridiculed by his enemies, fellow bishops, um, and who went to great lengths to make his life miserable. And in everything, he silently, silently accepted this as a personal participation in the cross of Christ. And it's a really good litmus test, I think. We see or read things like this, and we think, how could anyone allow this? Why didn't he say something, right? Why didn't he fight his accusers and make the many professional religious, the bishops and priests who tried, uh, for the most part, succeed in sabotaging his career, why didn't he do something to stop this? We've all been there, albeit maybe to a lesser degree, maybe not from clergy, maybe. Um, but those times in our lives when someone slanders us or accuses us of something God knows isn't true, that stings, it hurts. Uh, especially if that person is convinced of it, they're just angry at you. But the test is our desire to fight back, right? To fight fire with fire. I remember in seminary when the professor says, if you fight fire with fire, the whole world burns. Once a uh, bishop friend of mine was accused of something, had all kinds of hatred and vitriol thrown at him, internet trolls, the whole works. And I went to visit him to kind of talk about this, to kind of encourage him and say, you know, whatever. And in talking to him, I got frustrated with him because he wasn't saying anything in defense, you know? So, write back, you know, tell these people, call them out, challenge them, right? Um, and at one point, I got so angry, I stood up and I pointed at him, I said, you need to say something. And it was that moment I thought, I am in trouble. Like, you know, I crossed that line. <laughs> looked at me, and I thought, step right back. <laughs> and there was this awkward 10 seconds of silence, and I thought, I'm going to get it, here it comes. And he calmly said, what did our Lord say before Pontius Pilate? Nothing. Who am, I, who am I to anything more than my master? And that was the end of the conversation. It was a profound lesson. And he was later found innocent of the charges and exonerated, by the way. Um, but he didn't fight back. He knew it was true, it was right, and God knew it was true, it was right. And that's all he needed to know. Most of us, myself included, feel the need to defend ourselves. Clear our names, speak out. But in the life of St. Nectarius, which this movie did a really nice job capturing the story as a visual biography, he never defends himself. When the Archbishop was berating him for supposedly trying to weasel his way to the patriarchate, which in reality he couldn't have cared less about, or the government official accusing him of immorality with his nuns, it says that he would just bow his head and whisper, God knows this is not true. And the most powerful line from the film, when he was asked how he kept his faith amidst all this slander and hatred from supposed Christians and bishops of the church no less, he said, woe to me if my faith depends on man. It's a good word for all of us. I think this when people leave the church because they're mad at the priest or they fight over a pierogi recipe or something stupid. There are a number of stupid things people get angry and leave churches over. Woe to us if we, our faith depends on on man. It's appropriate that in talking about him, we would also come to the almost midpoint of Great Lent, third Sunday of Lent, the Sunday of the veneration of the Holy Cross. Uh, and there is something that we have to come to understand when we come before the cross, whether it's on this Sunday or whenever. Something that's a great and powerful mystery. A mystery which is at the same time profound yet very simple. Something we've been mentioning since Forgiveness Vespers and just about every service since, and it's this. If we do not possess humility, which our Lord shows so perfectly from the cross, that we will never truly know the joy of possible. We do not encompass self-sacrifice, love for one another. We do not embrace what struggle is. We can't put the needs of those we love or should love above our own pride and ego, then we will never, never comprehend the meaning of Holy Pascha. I dare say we will never experience the joy of the eternal Pascha in the heavenly kingdom. So much of the problems of our day, from nations at war, churches at odds, to supposed Christians, Orthodox or otherwise, who are a willful opposition to even basic teachings of the church, to our own personal pride, it all comes down to that sin of pride. It was the sin in the beginning at the fall, we just heard in the readings a few days ago, and it's one of the, 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 the one that trips us up the most even now. Name one sin that pride isn't at the root. Anger. If it's not done my way, I'm going to lose my stuff. Right? Gluttony. I want to eat, drink that as much as I want. Avarice, I want to possess that and more of it. Lust, I want to feel this way or that. Sloth, I don't want to do anything. Envy, I want what they have. I, 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 me, me, me. But think of it. Our world says, follow your heart. Christ says, 
follow me. The world says, believe in yourself. Christ says, believe in me. The world says, discover yourself. Christ says, deny yourself. The world says, be true to you. Christ says, be faithful to me. Right? And so, the sin of pride is at the root of everything. But the cross shows us that our Lord's sacrifice was the opposite of this. Christ humbly submits to the will of the Father, saying, not as I will, but thy will be done, and goes to the cross in extreme humility. But it's not all doom and gloom and sadness and misery. For us, whatever the cross is mentioned, the empty tomb is always close behind. They're always connected. And through the cross and in the empty tomb, joy comes to the entire world. The humility of the cross ushers forth the glory and joy of the empty tomb. And there's nothing that can diminish that glory. There's nothing or no one who would take that joy from Apostia from us. But as I say often, no one can take it from us. However, we can easily give it away. Giving in to the many temptations and distractions of the world around us. But there has to be a cross on Golgotha for there to be an empty tomb. There has to be a Holy Friday for there to be a Pascha. There has to be humility for there to be salvation. But to experience for this for real, we need to understand real humility as God chose it. And not just watching a powerful movie, which is great, but also in real life. In our marriages, in our friendships, our work relationships, within the church community. We need to make humility of Christ something that we cultivate in our own person. But you know what? Those injustices we face in our lifetime, maybe they will be exonerated. And maybe they won't. At the end of the movie, there's this terrible scene where you're noticing through the whole movie someone is writing something. And you think it's him writing his, his, his writings or translations or whatever else, but it's not. At the end of the movie, it's revealed that it was this resolution being written out for the Patriarch of Alexandria, offered in 1998, asking for the forgiveness of the saint. Now remember, he died in poverty and shame in 1920, persecuted out of envy and pride his whole church career, dying penniless and virtually alone. In his life, he saw no exoneration at all. But 78 years after his death, even 37 years after he was canonized and declared a saint of the church, the successors of his persecutors asked for his forgiveness. The triumph of the cross, the victory of humility, is just so beautiful. Power might win in the short term, but ultimately, humility has the victory by the power of the crucified. And we sing today, Before thy cross we bow down and worship, O Master. But the ending is just as important. And thy holy resurrection we glorify. In orthodoxy, these two events are inseparable. Are only understood as far as we're able in light of the virtue of humility. The whole story of our salvation speaks of this. The great God of glory becomes a helpless baby. Goes through our life experiencing everything we do but sin, and then goes to the cross because of our sin, not his. And for us, he is beaten, made fun of, and spit on, and brutally executed. All this plays out to show his perfect self emptiness his kenosis. So as we come forward and venerate the precious wood of the cross, let's meditate on these things, because if we don't possess the virtue of humility, we'll never truly know the Lord's possible. So as we begin the descent towards Holy Week, the cross, and the empty tomb, but strive individually and as a parish to seek that humble disposition which our Lord exemplifies, especially with one another. And so that may be truly really experience the Holy Resurrection of Christ. But in the meantime, let us in a gesture of sincere humility bow down today in humility before His Holy Cross with gratitude for what He has and all those who have followed Him have endured. For behold, to the cross, joy is come into all the world. And may God, through the prayers of our Holy Father Nectarius, grant us the grace of humility which through a movie at a theater we could see this lived out, inspired by this. In our own lives we could, through His Holy Cross, be given the strength to carry our own individual crosses. With humility and love for God and the people around us, we can properly repent at Golgotha and rejoice in His empty tomb on the glorious day of His Holy Pascha. Amen.
May the Lord God merit them in his heavenly kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. For the sick and the suffering, those suffering from MS, diabetes, cancer, AIDS, strokes, heart attacks, those with life-threatening illnesses, debilitating diseases, those who are addicted to drugs, alcohol, and gambling, those suffer from depression, abuse, or marital strife. For those in the hospitals, with hospices and prisons, institutions, and nursing homes, those who to defend them and know to pray for them. May the Lord God bear them in his heavenly kingdom always, now and ever, unto the ages of ages. For all victims of injustice, terror, torture, war, strife, famine, and party, those in the face of natural disaster and political unrest, may the Lord God bear them in his heavenly kingdom always, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. For those who fall asleep will hope the resurrection the eternal life, especially those names commemorate this liturgy and all that we have in our hearts and our minds. May the Lord God bear them in his heavenly kingdom always, now and ever, unto the ages of ages. For those who have taken their own lives in a moment of darkness, the Lord shall mercy remember them too in his kingdom, always, now and ever, unto the ages of ages. And for you and all Orthodox Christians, may the Lord God bear all of you in his heavenly kingdom, always, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages.
be gracious to us sinners and save us. Father, let me start 
Amen. I myself am the living bread from God from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he shall live forever. The bread I will give is my flesh for the life of the Lord.
and forsake us not, O for our hope and need. Give peace thy world, thy churches, thy priests, all those of civil authority, to all thy people. Every good gift and a perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, unto the ascribed glory, thanksgiving word to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the angels of Asia. Uh, will be about the mystery of death and the funeral. 
And now I'm going to also add in things you should not do after you die. Um, so if you're interested, well, you know, please come, join us, ask questions, we talk about it. Um, this coming week, uh, on Tuesday night, uh, at Christ the Savior, Father Stephen is offering uh, the third of their uh, talks on the Eucharist. Uh, Compline at 6.30, the talk at 7. And then this coming Wednesday, there's no more sanctified at Holy Apostles. Uh, we've had this tradition since we started, that we always serve one with Christ the Savior, and they come here for one. So uh, this coming Wednesday at 6.30, we'll go over to Christ the Savior for sanctified liturgy. Uh, and then the last for Sanctify of the Year, I think, is sometime in April. They're going to come here and be with us. Um, today, uh, it's, it's all about Christ's Savior this week. Uh, so today, the Legend Vespers is a Christ's Savior. Uh, Father Andrew Stephen Damick is giving the, the homily today. So if you're interested, please go and, and support them. Uh, and in your bulletin, uh, the, uh, the April calendar, my favorite calendar to make of the whole year. Get just excited right all the these days for Pascha and Holy Week coming up. Uh, that's in there so you see what we're going to be doing. Uh, and also some questions people asked about the percent of my liturgy. I put an article by Father Tom uh, in the back of that over there. Um, so um, what we'll do is uh, we'll sing Memory Eternal for Father Dan. We'll sing many years for our birthdays. And then we'll all come to the middle of the church. We'll sing Before Thy Cross. We'll all bow down together and then just come up and kiss the cross. That way we're not here until like, you know, 4 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, we, we all bow down, just come kiss it, and then we'll go. Um, so I like keeping the order. It's good. Let's pray. Ran, ran.